Over the mini buy, uh, what were some of the things y'all were able to drill down and look at to, you know, maybe move forward with? Yeah, really, you know, everything. D-led, I mean, you get a couple of days to reflect, uh, look back on some stuff and kind of where we're at, uh, why we're in the position we're in right now. Uh, you take it all, right? The good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, some things that that are encouraging that, uh, you know, we can we can hopefully clean up here quickly and uh, some other things we may try to stay away from but that's usually the way it goes when you're looking at it uh, and you play two games like that in five days and you come up short for different reasons with a chance to win in the fourth uh, yeah certainly that that can linger uh, but you got to turn the page and you be objective like we tried to do since the day I got here so we feel good players will be in here tomorrow um, to work out get meetings hopefully yeah, that extra day will help and then we'll be back at it Wednesday uh, any update on the quarterback situation or the plan no to play Ritter? There, there Ritter? No, there, that Ritter. was never a situation, ever. I don't know where that, that those are. Um, and, I mean, you understand why the questions get, get asked. You lose two games in five days, and, I, I, you know, everybody wants to panic. We're right in the middle of it, not where we want to be, but the reality is you're right in the middle of a, of a playoff race with a conference opponent coming in here and a game we need to win. Um, defensively, what were some of the things you all, um, you know, maybe looked at over the little break here? Sure. Um, you know, why, you know, we're giving up explosives at certain times and critical situations. There are different schemes. It's not just one player or one scheme, but you got to get to the bottom of it and everything. Uh, you know, when, when we're calling things or, in, you know, certain matchups. So, anything else? You were talking the other day about on Friday, I believe, the difference between extending plays and pressing and how it's about mm -hmm. recognizing that the journey is over. Sure. What is an example of that that you kind of point to when you're kind of showing these guys, like, hey, this is the difference and that where that fine line is? Yeah, I mean, you don't want to take an initiative away. We've made some some good plays, as you see. Most teams around the NFL do, you know, when you have play extensions. But there's a fine line when you're back there forever. You're going laterally too long and understand when the journey's over, not to take a sack or uh, not to throw the ball back across the field and maybe put your foot in the ground and go or throw it away. And that, that's the hardest part sometimes when you feel like you're in a game like we were Thursday night, um, as ugly as it felt at times, the reality, we got the ball back with a chance to win it late and we could have avoided some of those negative plays. That's when. I don't know really any offense that's going to be very effective if you're off track a lot. We've been pretty damn good when we've been on track, and we just haven't been as consistent lately. And those are things that we can eliminate. It's not just on the quarterback. You get a protection breakdown. You get something wide open. You can't even get to the top of drops in the lap. You move around. It's things like that. Arthur, you're getting ready for a guy that you studied in the draft a lot, mm -hmm. Justin Fields. And when you look at his tape now, especially over the last four or five games that he's played, what, what things are you seeing that he's grown at, yeah. that he's matured at? Is he be obviously better now than he was as a college player? Different, you know. I mean, he's been in it's the second system he's already been in in the NFL. I mean, I think a lot of times people are so quick to judge one way or the other. Um, there's a lot of things that have to go into it for a guy to be very successful. I and mean, one of them, you need the right climate. I think what the Bears have done, they've found an identity. They have a formula right now that's. Uh, that, you know, you see what the numbers are running the football as, as well as anybody, and he's a huge part of that. And whether it's design runs or you get in a game like New England, when they get to those third downs, he was able to break those tackles. He's a hard guy to bring down. And those play extensions, I mean, that's been uh, crushing to some people. And they, they hold the ball, and they're able to have had some success doing that. And so that's what you're seeing right now. I think you certainly see his confidence growing. He's strong as hell. He's probably the strongest guy they got behind the in the backfield. You know, with you know, taking account the running backs, and so he's doing a nice job. And we got to make sure we tackle well. And we got to clearly we need to stop the run, not just him, but their their traditional runs as well. Arthur, uh, I know I asked a little bit about it on Friday, but as far as the pass rush, when you look at things, maybe self scouted, how do you generate? I guess more of it to where it's maybe being more effective than it's. Than at the moment. Well, it depends what your metrics are about being effective. Is it getting off the spot, or is it, is it just sacks? I mean, it's, it's pressure. It's pressure. I know, but the, and sometimes like, well, what kind of pressure are you talking about? Getting them off the spot, or you're saying like, 
Pre sure, yeah, so, I mean, obviously, the pressure rates that, that exist, you guys are very are much towards the bottom of the league. Like, is there certain aspects? I guess, it, I guess, yeah, do you feel like you're getting to the quarterback enough to make a difference at this point? Well, I mean, I, I think when you if you lose a game, then, then there's certainly there's a critical third down or two that, yeah, certain you wish you could get them off the spot or get the ball out quicker. I mean, at times last on Thursday night, you just take that, that game and we had chances on third down. We didn't come up with the interceptions and things that we forced some things, throws into. Um, you know, the week before, the ball was coming out quick. Certainly, you would love to have gotten to the quarterback a little bit more, but we didn't. And so there's things you look at schematically in terms of your rush games and certain pressures you're running, simulated pressures, five-man pressures. You want to go out a lot of blitz. I mean, all those things are taken into account. Do you feel like you're getting, since you're delineating, obviously between sacks and getting off the spot, do you feel like you're getting the quarterback off the spot enough? Because the sack numbers are, you know, the obvious of what they are. Look, there's a lot of things, that are, the entire team, that we can do better. Like, I mean, I don't know. You put pinpoint just one thing there, you, you know, you don't win the last two games. Um, yeah, there's certainly everything we can do better. Have there been areas in the last couple of games where you think Marcus has, has struggled, particularly that maybe he wasn't earlier? I, I would say, I th look, you, you know, and that's part of your job responsibility as a quarterback is, you know, it's, you have the responsibility. It's the most scrutinized position in all sports, and that's why it's probably the most well compensated to do. And I think you're seeing a couple plays here. Certainly you could put blame on him, but there's also plenty of blame to go around. Operationally, like I said, if you get pressure right there, again, I don't know what to tell the quarterback if he's looking down to pick the ball up and he comes, it's, it has to low snap, it gets up, and the, there's a defender right in his face. I mean, that's kind of hard to overcome there. So there's a lot of little things that add up to it that we can do better and we have at times. I wouldn't pinpoint it just on one player, Jeff. Did some of his decision making in the last game kind of alarm you at all? Some of the throws he made or? No, as a team, what, what alarms you is not staying on track and not being as clean operationally in all three phases. That's what alarms you as a coach. And I know, I think it was Friday, you said, Marcus, like a lot of young, or excuse me, it doesn't like a lot of young players are developing, you're just trying to develop them. If, if there was a situation where he had to go into a game right now, what's your confidence level right now that he could play and function? Oh, and everybody that's got a helmet, our confidence level is high, Jeff. So all 48 guys, it's just we haven't, Put any two quarterback plays in. I know D Lad's always harping that he's the one guy that doesn't play. Usually your backup doesn't unless you put in some two quarterback packages. Maybe we can we can get there. D Lad done it before. But uh, look, if a guy has a helmet, we have confidence for him to play. Whether that's backup guard, you know, the fourth edge rusher, all those guys. But it's not at the point obviously where you feel it's necessary to make a change right now. Where that what position? Quarterback. Quarterback, it'd be the same. I feel like everything's up for grabs, Jeff. Um, every week, if we felt that one move would certainly be the difference in us winning or losing, well, we'd make that move. We're not at that point at a lot of spots. So I, again, I know the line of questioning and your and your reason and where we're at. Right, you lose two games in a row. We're four and six, right in the middle of it. Those are the that's the low hanging fruit. It's not the the reason that we lost the last two games. Uh, everybody's had a part in that. I'll go back, go back and play it, but you're not going to change this week, correct? Playing the guys that have been playing, Jeff. I'm sorry. I, I don't. If, if we had a major announcement, I'd tell you. Okay. I mean, this is kind of comical, as, as, as I told Mike the other day. If we're going to make a change, I'd come in here and tell you we're going to make a change. we got to get better as, as an offense. So this whole gotcha game or these loaded questions, it's comical to me. I promise you, like I'd be transparent like I always have. If we were going to make a change, I'd tell you, you'd see it at practice. Wouldn't even make these gimmicks of trying to, for what? Because you need every damn rep you'd get if you were going to make the change. So any other way you want to ask? No, it's not Play that this I got you. Game, I'm, just, show. I'm just trying to, I want you to educate me. <laughs> what do you want to be educated on? Thought process on the quarterbacks and, you know, a lot of things. I just, it's yeah. the same thing with the operation. I mean, it's not just on the quarterback. You got you to gotta make sure you can get the play started, too. Uh, so a lot goes into it. If we in any position, we felt that the change needed to be made, we'd make it. What's AJ's status for this week? Do you know 
Yeah. Is he going to practice? Uh, hopefully. By Wednesday, I'll give you a better update of that. Okay. But he's been in here working. Hopefully, get him back. You mentioned last week that you thought you might have more, I guess, return to IR guys that might pop back this week. Yeah, I have a better on Wednesday. You know, so we'll get some guys back in here tomorrow. Like I said they needed a, needed a break, a rest right after 10 straight games. So hopefully the extra day helps all of us. So where is he right now in his progress, especially considering what having cycled through three left guard, three left guards in three weeks? Like, where is he in terms of maybe I'm closer or not closer? Coach, you mentioned earlier a lot of things that can disrupt the efficiency of a passing game. Is there a more common disruption that you notice in your evaluation each week that kind of takes place with this team more often than others? Not necessarily. You know, we've, we've run the ball at a pretty high clip. So a lot of times your passing attempts are pretty limited. And then it hasn't been just one thing. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things we could do better. Uh, and that's a big part of what you evaluate every week. And certainly when you have a couple extra days, okay, what do we feel like we're pretty good at? Uh, what do we need to stay away from? All, all that stuff goes into it. Self evaluate or in that evaluation, you guys have done it for the last couple of days. Obviously, a lot's been made all season of Marcus and Kyle and kind of their inability, it seems like, to connect on passes. Was there anything you saw that can maybe explain why some of that connection hasn't been there? And a lot of different reasons. You know, some of it, you know, whether you've let them too much or some of it just. Timing with the routes. I mean, we had at times. I mean, he has been successful. I know uh, he doesn't have the Tyree kill numbers. Everybody, you guys panic and act like it's some great failure. But uh, Kyle's had a good season. Certainly, other things we haven't. We don't have a ton of passing attempts either. So that's a, that's certainly a part of it. But like a lot of things we do, we can do it better, and that's what we're looking to do. Uh, I'd be I'd be discouraged if if it was one thing where a guy wasn't necessarily uh, productive. You know, when in man, you know, not just zone, but I don't think that's necessarily been the case. There's a lot of things. Sometimes it's been a comedy of errors. The timing's sped up. Maybe it's the uh, get pressured. Maybe this ball comes out quick. You don't you don't get into a clean pocket, or we have missed them. Whatever it is, I mean, there's a lot of different reasons. But I'm very confident in both those guys, and especially Kyle. About all the problems, you know, it's a whole bunch of things. We're not going to put it on one guy, one group, whatever. Mm -hmm. In that sense, when each week it seems to be that it might be a different area that may bear some more of the responsibility than another, what does that say to you as a coach overall about where you are with your team? Well, it's been different every week, right? You go on to the uh, what's the start of week one, New Orleans. We jumped out to a big lead. Um, obviously, didn't finish the game. So, you know, you're in there. Uh, not a, not a lot of we weren't off track many times that that day, but obviously for different reasons we came up short in the fourth quarter. Started slow in LA, make a comeback, make a lot of plays as a team. Uh, then you know had two shots at it at the end, we got picked on one, and then yeah, essentially in a hail mary spot, right? Come back, beat Seattle. Game goes back and forth on the road. Come back, right? Cleveland ran the ball pretty pretty good clip there. What was it after that? Tampa. Remember what happened there? So, we all remember that story. So, a lot of things that, that start to add up. Come back, you won a tough game at home uh, against San Fran, physical game. Uh, pretty quick game, ran the ball a lot since he got down. I kind of made a comeback before half. Uh, not a ton of possessions in the second, second half. W weren't very clean. And then, you know, able to win the crazy game against Carolina, right? Found a way. Able to win in a two-minute situation. I had to pick the ball up and were able to get it done. I mean, there's some other things that clearly happened that game as well. And then the Charter game came out pretty efficient. Went back and forth, had a shot in the fourth quarter, didn't get it done. And then we all saw Thursday night. As ugly as that felt, still had a chance in the fourth quarter. So what you're seeing is a lot of opportunity. Other than Cincinnati, we had a chance to go win these games. And there have been different game plans, and depending on the opponent, that we've executed relatively well. You lose a couple, especially two in a row. Yeah, there's things that you're, you're constantly evaluating as you are during the whole season and puts us in the spot we're in. So we're four and six and with a big game at home and you're still right in the middle of it.
So this is a critical week for us. We'll find out a lot about ourselves. Good. Chris, I feel like you need to be more consistent overall. <laughs> well, I think anything you do, you need to be consistent. Um, I mean, that's our job, right? To, to improve, and that's what we'll continue to do. Coach, the Bears, um, just looking at the defensive front, Justin Jones, and I guess Robinson started his first game. I just mm -hmm. want to know how those kids are playing. And, play uh, hard. Like every time you've seen them, Matt Eberflew's defense. They play hard. All his defenses have, they did in Indianapolis. And like I said, they are um, been a lot of close games as well. And uh, those guys are, are fighting up front. You mentioned, you know, you're talking about low snaps before on Thursday night. It was an issue when you are having low snaps how because of the amount of play action you run zone reads that you run if it is a low snap how much does that alter or mess up the timing of this offense versus maybe some other offenses it's, right it's not as again it's like i said it you expect not to have an issue and drew's done a pretty good job all year a couple that were low there at night if it happens in a, in a drop back your eyes go down if it happens in a handoff usually you fix it in the Bears defense, Eddie Jackson and uh, Brisker on the back end has the rookie playing back there for him. He's an instinctive player. Plays fast, tough. That's what it looked like coming out of Penn State. Eddie Jackson, a ball hawk in this back. Sure, he does a good job reading the quarterback's eyes. He's got experience. He's got instinct. Playing deep. And it's, uh, that's why he's been a productive player in the NFL. I'm sure I asked you this before, but uh, as an offensive guy, what's the most important aspects of a quarterback and what's the most overrated aspect, do you think? Depends on what scheme you're going to run. Your scheme. Your scheme. So, obviously, operating would be number one. Things we ask them to do with the line of scrim scrimmage. Uh, can you handle situational football? Third down, uh, two minute, all those things. So, clearly, if you were going to be a team that dropped back 50 times, you'd, you'd make sure that you, with some other characteristics you'd probably lean into more. But where we're at right now as a program and as a team, uh, Guys that can keep us efficient and consistent, and that's what we look for every week. Big picture with this offensive line. Uh, Chris Lynch said on Thursday that at the beginning of Thursday night's game that something just felt off, that something wasn't clicking, something felt wrong. And he, when, in your experience, kind of what needs to go into making that change on the fly in the middle of the game to kind of right yeah. the ship? And that's what we did. I mean, there are certain things we did, change the pace. Thought we were able to run the ball better in the second half. Some opportunities, obviously, we had some uh, holds that crushed some drives, and that has nothing to do with the officials. I mean, that's what happened. Um, so you do make adjustments, and we've done that every every week, and we had to do that the other night. The way it started started slow, and that's a credit to Carolina. And then we were late on a couple calls, and, and really that hadn't been an issue all year, but it, it was early in that game. It's probably what Chris is referring to. And we were able to settle down, and it gave us a shot.